Hello, my name is Alex Romero from the Galasso Learning Solutions. On this week's Genuine Learning blog, we will be discussing the AICPA's 2024 Government Series Report on Fraud in the Public Sector and How to Detect It. This report was issued in June 2024 by the AICPA's Government Performance and Accountability Committee. I actually have the pleasure of being a member of this committee, being appointed around the same time this report was published. I highlight that point to say while I'm on the committee now, I, and I'm very excited to share this report with you all, I wasn't involved in the creation of this report, but hopefully I will be in future reports. So what does fraud look like in the government? Fraud in the public sector is concerning. It can occur at any level of government, at the federal and state level, and locally with counties, municipalities, and special districts. When fraud is found in a government, it erodes the public's confidence and trust in the government, which can be detrimental, especially in local governments. Since governments provide a vast number of services and carry out many functions, there are a ton of areas that fraud could be hiding, which makes it all the more difficult to uncover. We also saw an increase in federal grants recently. In 2023, there was $1.037 trillion in discretionary and mandatory federal grants. With that much money circulating out there, it increases the chances for fraud to take place. Individuals will have more opportunity to receive funds, the motivation to go after some of this money, and the rationale that there is so much out there that they should be able to have some of it. So there are four different cases within this report that are highlighted. The first is a federal grant fraud in which three individuals conspired to make false applications, financial records, shell companies, fabricated investors, and budgets, investments, and bills for work that were never performed. The defendants received approximately $8.4 million in grant funds that went to their own salaries and investments. They were ordered to pay $5.5 million in restitution. One signed a plea deal with the other two having a prison sentence and probation. Preventions of this grant fraud include having trained and competent grant specialists reviewing grant requests, utilizing predictive analysis techniques, monitoring post-grant milestones, and having full knowledge of the grant requirements. The second case is a school district theft case in which the district's treasurer used district credit cards for personal purchases and made online vendor payments for her own personal debts. This person was issuing checks, making deposits, and reconciling the bank accounts. In total, there was $178,391 in improper transactions. The district treasurer was sentenced to 24 months behind bars for this crime. This fraud could have been prevented by segregating the duties of receiving money, issuing checks, opening monthly bank statements, and reconciling the bank. All disbursements requiring an approved purchase order and credit cards being stored properly and that the credit card statements being reconciled to purchase orders. Next is an elected official's response to fraud in cash collections. This fraud was committed by an individual that directly reported to an elected official. The justices were not receiving, reviewing the submitted reports to ensure all cases were properly reported and remitted. There also was no review of bank reconciliations or other financial records. As such, the county clerk was able to misappropriate $59,000 in court funds. The clerk was ordered to pay the funds back as restitution and was sentenced to six months of jail time. Now, preventing cash collections from fraud include separating the cash collection from recording the transactions and reconciling receipts and monitoring disbursements and verifying vendor and bank information. The last case is state tax credits fraudulently used. A couple created fake companies that they then used to fraudulently apply for tax credits. In total, they were awarded $10.6 million in credits. This scheme was only detected after staff at the Department of Revenue noticed inconsistencies in tax credit applications submitted by businesses owned by the same individuals. 
This led to criminal charges being filed against the couple. Now, preventative measures in this case are validating data and edit checks to online credit applications, having different people assigned to the application, verification, distribution process, and automated data analytics. So who is responsible for detecting and preventing fraud? The short answer is everyone. With a number of fraud cases involving the collaboration of internal and external individuals, each of these groups play a role in detecting and preventing the fraud. Internally, that's elected officials, CFO, director of finance, department heads, finance team members, administrative technicians, and this is done by monitoring internal controls, regularly reviewing suspicious activities, recommending process improvements. We also have externally auditors, oversight committees, whistleblowers, community members, and they can investigate financial information. Uh, they could pursue legal action and report suspected fraudulent activity. So there are five ways in which you can address fraud. First, you can check the current status of fraud activity and identify the risk in critical areas of performance and reporting. Assess recent audit findings, risk management reports, and complaints to identify areas of risk. You can determine three things that you could do right now to address fraud, including having targeted fraud risk assessments, examining areas that have not been given attention in the past. You can communicate with others outside your department or entity and understand their areas of concern. And you can educate and train employees and officials at all levels about fraud risk detection methods and the importance of reporting suspicious activities. By incorporating these strategies along with others, this will help create a culture of transparency, integrity, and accountability in the public sector. So what are some of our key takeaways from this? Fraud has no limits, and it is critical to have a fraud detection and prevention system in place. This will provide community members more confidence in the spending of tax dollars by the government. And lastly, there are many techniques that can be used to detect and mitigate fraud. So if you're wanting to learn more or read the full report, you can download a copy of this report on the AICPA SEMA's website under the resource section. I've also included a link to the report here for you. Thank you for joining me today as we looked at the 2024 Detecting Government Fraud Report that was published by the AICPA and the GPAC Committee.